you, you inspire me with your stories about stand up, and, and I'm curious to know your origin story. When did you first think you were funny, and when did you first go on stage? I mean, you were part of a very short list of legendary comedians who transitioned to television and, and movies, of course. But what were those early years like for you? I, I, well, here's the thing is, I always wanted to be a filmmaker and a storyteller. I never thought of myself as a comedian or anything. I wanted to, you know, be behind the scenes making movies. But I had an acting background. I had a great theater department down in Houston. Uh, I had training. Uh, I always thought I was funny. I always thought I was funny, even going back to, you know, my, I came from a funny family. My father was funny. My brother's funny. Um, so when I, and I studied comedy, when I say studied comedy, I, I studied comedy because that's what I love to watch. Uh, my, my influences are everyone from, I mentioned Woody, but they're also, you know, everybody from Ernst Lubitsch to Kaufman and Hart to uh, Cary Grant to William Powell and Carol Lombard. And uh, I mean, my, and then, you know, Myrna Loy. And then, of course, the stand up comics that I watched, like Myron Cohn and Alan King. And so I watched everybody. So they're all influences me, especially. And then filmmaking, storytelling, all of that. So I, using Woody and Mel Brooks and Paul Mazursky as role models, they all started out of stand-up comics. And I thought, well, this is an interesting way to get people to see my humor. Elaine May, another one. Um, this is another way to see people see my humor so I can get a job. Because if I just have acting... I, I don't audition all that well. So this is a way I can get beyond that, cut through. And that's what happened. And of course, my first job was writing for Rodney Dangerfield. Rodney and I became friendly. And so I wrote for Rodney and Stiller and Mira. And then Rodney brought me out to California, which gave me a leg up on other comics. So, and that's when I got to go to the comedy store and the improv and I got seen and that's how I got Hollywood nights. And, um, and then that, that's how it started. Uh, I never thought I would be doing stand-up full-time. I never, even though I was doing well, I never thought of myself as a career stand-up comic. Um, but it was great. And I great. that's very hard. Stand-up comedy is really hard. Uh, and, uh, but that led to everything else. Is there any chance you'd do it again? Here's the thing. Yes, but here's the problem is the audience has changed. It's not that they've changed, it's that, that the audience got older. It's like, you know, look at all of us on this uh, Zoom thing, right? We're not the audience that go to comedy clubs for the most part. Um, and, and as my friend said, if you go and, and there's an older audience out there, they would rather spend, let's say, $100 to see Bill Maher than to go to a comedy club for $25 to see you. And that's true. That's my, you know, my friend Bobby Slayton, and you know, tells me all this time. It's just the audience is, you know, it, it's a very young audience, and that's that's just generational. Most things I think are generational. But um, I would, I'd like to do the history thing again uh, in some way. I enjoyed doing that um, because I didn't have to do joke, 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 which you have to do if you're a stand-up, pretty much, unless you have a following and they know you. So that's I don't know if that's a good answer, but that's it. <laughs> 